I love the Nintendo Switch. It's my favorite console of all time. But if there's one thing I think we can all agree upon, Switch games are very expensive. Having a hybrid portable console is a great investment, but it makes my wallet cry. <coughs> I'm sorry, wallet. How much of an investment is it, you may ask? First, you have to buy the console itself, which is $300. $350 if you want the OLED version. $70 for a Pro Controller, an extra pair of Joy-Cons for $75, $20 for Switch Online per year, but you can upgrade this to $50 a year if you want to play N64 and GBA titles. And oh yeah, all your favorite games are at $60 to $70 a pop. And don't even get me started on Amiibo. Yeah, Switch can cost a lot. And while I use the console every day and have a ton of games to play on it, it can rob your savings real quick. I've had several conversations with friends about all the great Switch games they want to try, but a common reason they didn't have the latest and greatest stuff was because everything was so expensive. And yeah, $60 for a game is no joke. However, to avoid going to the poorhouse, I learned a few tricks on how to save a dollar or two when it comes to buying Switch games. So I figured, why not make a video about it? Whether it's a little or a lot, you can save some money with both physical and digital Switch games. And I'm going to teach you a thing or two I learned. These tips can help you whether you enjoy gaming casually or you're a hardcore collector like me. I've spent so much money. Here are the best ways I found to keep my wallet from wailing in agony. <laughs> Where, when, and how you purchase your games is going to make a significant impact on how much you spend. There are digital titles, physical media, AAA games, indie games, I games, and everything in between. Knowing what you want before buying is just as important as the transaction itself. So let's look at some of the different things to consider when buying Switch games. Let's begin with digital games. To be transparent, this isn't my preferred method of collecting games but it's certainly a valid way in this new digital age. And if you like your content digital, congrats! You already saved a lot more money than physical collectors. Why wait at the store when you can pre-order and download it onto your Switch as soon as possible? No plastic, no card, no... people. I'm so lonely. One of the best ways to get these titles is through the Nintendo eShop, Switch's digital storefront. The great deal section of the eShop is a great way to find random sales or a hidden gem you've never had the chance to play yet. A lot of it is shovelware, sure, but at the same time, there could be a game you've never heard of, and it might be at the right price for a new experience. One added benefit of the eShop are gold points, which you get with every purchase. These are little reward tokens that you can redeem to help purchase more games down the line, and they look like coins, which is cute. It may not seem like much, but they add up quick. Basically, each point is worth a penny. So 150 points equals $1.50, 500 points is $5, and so on and so forth. If you buy digital games frequently enough, these points will build up and you can get some decent games. I recently used mine to buy Bellatro, a retro card game with a lot of unique jokers. It originally cost $15, but I got it for the price of a goose egg after cashing in my gold points. They can absolutely help out. You can get gold points from buying physical copies too, but there's a catch. You can only redeem them for one year after the game was released. After that, they won't work, which kind of sucks for sure. But hey, if you're already going mostly digital, this shouldn't be a problem for you. Just be aware of this when digging through the bargain bin for a physical copy. While gold points are great, they can only do so much. It'll take a lot of savings before you can use them to buy the big first party titles for $60. What is one to do? No worries, digital fans. You'll have something else that'll save you a few extra coins. Real ones this time. Game vouchers. Nintendo Switch Online members have access to game vouchers. These are basically two passes that let you pick two first party games at a discount. Two vouchers can be bought for $100, basically 50 each. Yes, you spend 100 smackaroonies, but if you bought these titles individually, you'd be spending 120 instead. That's 20 bucks you just saved. There are some good games to choose from too. Super Mario Bros. Wonder, Breath of the Wild, Luigi's Mansion 3, Splatoon 3, all of which are $60 or more. Heck, one big way people take advantage of this deal 
is using the voucher to get Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, a game that's originally $70. God, so expensive. And pair it with another game, so that way you save $30 instead of $20. To be honest, I don't use vouchers much because I collect physical games. But if you buy digitally, it most certainly is a bargain. Especially if you use it to get Tears of the Kingdom. It can still be expensive, but I appreciate that the option is there for those who want to save. Plus, you do get $5 worth of gold points with each voucher purchase, which is nice. I wish you could gift vouchers to friends, but as of now, it looks like you can only buy them for yourself. And they even have a bit of drawbacks, as you can only buy eight before having to use one, and if unused, they expire after a year. That kinda rubs me the wrong way. Still, it is an option if one wants to try and get these games digitally, and every dollar counts. My last tip for digital gamers is more of a general one. Find a decent micro SD card. This is especially important if all you buy is digital titles, because you're going to run out of space fast. Grab a 100 gigabyte micro on sale somewhere, or you can get one as big as two terabytes. Trust me, this investment will be well worth it and save you a lot of time wasted uninstalling and reinstalling games as you play them. So what to do if I'm looking for physical copies? Since I'm a collector, I've got a lot of experience collecting these games and trying to find the best bang for your buck. I do own some digital titles, and while I do enjoy the convenience that comes with them, there's something about physical copies that just feels more secure. Plus, God forbid the Switch eShop goes down, like what happened with the Wii U and 3DS. If the shop goes down or a title is pulled from it, it won't matter how many gold points you have stockpiled away. It won't be there to buy. With a physical copy, you have them on your shelf. I can play Detective Pikachu if I want to. I don't though. But buying Switch physical has its drawbacks. The unfortunate truth with physical copies is that they'll always be more expensive. Even more so if a title is no longer having new copies made and its rarity increases. See, there's this thing we call the Switch tax, where the copy will cost more simply because of the cartridge itself. This is the reason some indie titles that are $15 will get a physical that costs $40. It honestly kind of sucks. Not only that, but physical games almost never go on sale. Usually sales will be for specific occasions, like Mario Day. This is a good day, or as was the case for this year, a good week or two, where you could get Mario titles for $20 off regular price. It might not sound like a lot, but for physical games starring the famous plumber, that's a decent deal. Outside of that, you don't find normal well-known deals for physical copies. Or do you? A majority of deals I find these days come from an unlikely source, a realm many have claimed to be the worst place to find anything reliable. Twitter. My feelings on social media aside, there are a few accounts I follow on social media that notify us of deals. And those two accounts are Nintendeal and Wario64. Yes, I see the irony of an account that saves you money named after the greediest man in the Nintendo universe. These guys are constantly tweeting deals and sales, and I mean constant. I'll just be going through my day and, oh, Dave the Diver physical pre-order? Yes, please. Fire Emblem Engage is 30% off? Heck yeah. Peppa Pig is $15? I guess I'll get that. I have found so many deals thanks to these two accounts alone. I don't know how they keep track of everything, but it works for me, and they've helped increase my collection quite a bit. What if you want to find out about deals, but don't want to deal with Twitter? Nintendeal has an app of their own called Deku Deals. It'll tell you about all the Switch games on sale and where you can get them. It'll even compare stock and price comparisons with other retail stores. This app is even useful for finding digital sales if you want them too, and keeping track of your collection. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but it's a great resource that I think is worth having. Now, let's talk about indie physicals. Yes, it's common to get them digitally, but you can get some physically as well. Some have their own retail versions you can get with other first party titles, but sometimes if you want a physical of an indie game, you have to use services that make physical versions of them. Publishers and distributors like Limited Run and Super Rare Games can get you physical versions of indie games if you choose to get them. They also have collector's editions, but you aren't going to save money on those. Honestly, this is more for people who want to collect physical Switch games than just play them casually. 
But if you do, you can get these titles for around $30, not including shipping. And that's close to the half the price of a first party title. Again, if you are playing games casually, just get them digitally. However, if you're a collector or just want something physical to hold on to, there are many different places to get different games. Limited Run is the most well-known, and while I've had no personal complaints with them, I've heard of horror stories where people would wait months for a game. There are other options like Super Rare Games, I Am 8-Bit, Serenity Forge. My personal favorite way to get physical games like this is Fangamer. Their physicals go all out with goodies, and while it can take a bit longer than the average delivery, I really like the quality of their games. And the options they have too. Plus, they got some cool merch that usually goes with it. Again, none of this stuff is sponsored or anything. I genuinely get a lot of my collection from these places. Unfortunately, with Limited Run especially, once their physicals are out of print, the price can skyrocket. And it can get ridiculous. That's the cost of getting games physically though. But hey, sometimes you can even save 10, 20, $30 if you're lucky. It's something, sure, but I feel like it's kind of chipping at the price more than getting a bargain. It's almost as if owning physical games, it's expensive no matter what you do. After making this video and doing some research, it's clear that while there are sales, Nintendo does expect a lot from its customers. Sales are rarely more than $20 off. Games with Mario slapped on them are usually $50 minimum without it. Some of these games are even unfinished or are remastered titles that were released years ago. Sure, there's a fresh coat of paint, new graphics, and some added content, but some have no change at all. It's Nintendo returning to that well to squeeze a little more money out of a port. No new work, just more money. It can get overwhelming to keep up with Nintendo's new games, and how they expect, and dare I say, exploit their fans when it comes to prices. Physical games are expensive, and while digital can be cheaper, it can be gone in an instant. After all, we just lost the Wii U and 3DS internet, leaving games like Splatoon 1 completely void of its content, even if you did get a physical. Yet despite its problems, Nintendo knows we're going to buy their games anyways. We have plenty of games to play already, but thanks to marketing and fear of missing out, we kind of just wait for Nintendo to make more games for us to buy. And Nintendo keeps making these games because history repeats itself. And half the time, Nintendo fans don't even recognize the pattern. My script editor, Wu, even said to me something like, they're expecting premium prices for games 20, sometimes 30 years old. I'm Nintendo biased, what can I say? This makes me realize an unfortunate tip that's hard for people to swallow. Not every game needs to be played or bought. In a world with the internet and FOMO, you have to pick and choose what new games you want to get. $60 for a game is a lot. And while some games are worth that price, you may want to wait for a sale or just skip the game altogether. I know you may feel behind if other people are playing and talking about games, but trust me, it's a big echo chamber of people sometimes, and it's okay to not buy a new game every week. Also, take a look at your gaming library and give those games a try too. I literally bought a physical of Unicorn Overlord when it first came out because I was genuinely excited for the game. But how often have I played it? I only touched the demo, the free demo, because I haven't had time to play it any other time. Yet as much as I want to play it, new games are coming out and I felt like I had to play those instead to keep up with the conversation. It's a never ending cycle. Catch up on your gaming backlog. But random, physical games are a lot more expensive overall. Is there anything we can do? Well, with Nintendo, not really. But there are options, local options. So while you can get games at retailers like Walmart, Best Buy, or Target, if you have to choose one of those three, Walmart is probably the cheapest, I've found there are more options and sales at local game stores. Do some digging online, see if you have a retro game store or two that you can go to. There were quite a few near me, and they had decent Switch selections. All sorts of games, some reasonably priced, and even some physical games that are hard to find in retail nowadays. I always enjoy going to places like these because you get people who really care about gaming, who most of the time can give you maybe a good deal, or at least let you know when certain Switch games are in stock. Have conversations with the employees who work there. Ask them their thoughts on certain games. I even have a lot of people recommend games for me to get 
because who knows? I just might find a hidden gem of a game to fall in love with and introduce to the channel. Just whatever you do, don't be a jerk. Not only is harassing employees awful, but no one's gonna wanna help you get a good deal if you're a terrible person. Also, things you could do to save money on Switch games specifically, use the games and trade-ins. At local game stores, you can find pre-owned titles which may be cheaper than sealed games. It's going to depend on the game, of course, and its condition, but sometimes it's worth it just to get a game that's not sealed. And some used games may not even have the case either, or just the game itself. And yeah, you can get that for cheaper as well. I don't get it for my collection because I gotta have the case. That's what I gotta do with physical. This one isn't for everyone as a lot of people wanna collect or keep all sorts of games they own. But if you have some old games you don't play anymore and you know for 100% they are laying around in your closet and you'll never play them again, trade those suckers in. You can either get cash for them or local places offer store credit, which you can use to help discount on those sweet, sweet Switch games. You might even find out that one of your games is super rare and worth way more than you thought. And besides, you'll have more room for new games too. Also, don't go to GameStop to trade your games. They might sell newer games for a reasonable price, but they seriously underprice older games for their trade-in value, especially if it's retro stuff. You're going to want to sell to a local place. Just make sure they're giving you a good deal. Don't have them go all DK oldies on you. Literally, to get some footage and just go shopping for fun, I went to a local game store near me. I went to Kill Screen Games, which is located in Asbury Park. It's a tiny retro game store you can find tucked away, and they have a decent Switch section. The staff was really nice, really informative. They let me film B-roll footage for this video. And after buying a few games from them, they were kind enough to give me a t-shirt. Uh, future me, wear it in the video. I don't care what happens, wear it. They were kind enough to give it to you, did you do it. Which I'm wearing right now. They didn't have to do it. They didn't pay me to do anything. In fact, they just decided to give it to me as a nice gift. And I really appreciate them going the extra mile. Again, you never know what deals you're going to get. I don't think everyone's going to get a free t-shirt from them or anything. But hey, it was nice of them to do. And I really appreciate it. Okay, I got back from Kill Screen Games and um, Bayonetta Serza, um, That I got that for 36 bucks. Uh, no, $34. That originally cost 50 60 bucks, I think 50 bucks at the time of retail. So that was really good. World Ends With You, final remix, pre-owned. So I got that around 40, 30, 40 bucks, yeah. Uh, again, not like as, as fancy as a brand new, but still good game and good price. Again, special thanks to Kill Screen Games. They were very, very kind, very, very sweet. I also got a Yoshi plushie for my friend, so uh yeah these are some of the ways i've saved money on nintendo switch games they are still expensive as most games are but there's still plenty of ways to save whether you decide to go with physical or digital games saving as much as you can while enjoying the vast library of games is super important i hope this video was able to bring you some tips on how to save money or maybe spend more money like me if you guys have any other tips on how to save money on switch games let me know in the comments I may even make a part two if I get enough. Until then, spend wisely and be sure to get some great games. Wow, I can't wait to save money and get some games. Well, time to eat my copy of Mario Odyssey for dinner. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. If you like what you saw, hit the like button and be sure to check out my other videos too. Special thanks to all these amazing people for helping me out with the video. I couldn't have done it without all of you. Also, again, special thanks to Kill Screen Games for letting me film at their store. I really appreciate it, and the links to their socials are in the description below. Also, an extra, extra special thanks to my Patreon patrons, including Mantle Ferox and Savicom. You help make every video possible, and you all mean so much to me. If you'd like to join our Patreon, the link is in the description below, along with my Twitch and Instagram. Thank you so much, and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a good night.